Good evening and welcome to Driver's Education, done remotely through the Oyster River High School. So we're going to wait probably about five minutes or so because the first night we always have people straggling on because for whatever reason they can't find the YouTube channel. So look at this, we've got 15 already logged on. So this is awesome. I can see that uh, people have caught on very quickly. So I'm gonna wait till I see the number closer to what we have for this class. This class is packed full. It's the biggest class that I've had uh, this year so far. Uh, we have 23 people signed up and we've got 16 people watching right now. So some people haven't found us yet. So hopefully they'll uh, come on. And this is the way that I usually start every class is that uh, I let people, you know, come on for about two or three minutes. We kind of talk about what we covered the night before. We may talk about what the weather is going to be looking like for driving in the next few days. And then we usually start getting into content uh, probably about five minutes in. So I'm still going to wait. Oh, we, we lost somebody. So it's very hard to tell. And I'm going to wait till I see the numbers up a little bit higher, like I said, before I start going into what we're going to be covering for this evening. So I uh, want to say thank you for uh, signing up, taking driver's ed here at Oyster River. Uh, this is not the way that we normally do things, but I think you're probably used to that. Uh, you're doing at least some schooling remotely if you're at Oyster River because they only have you in the school twice a week. I'm going to turn down the music here a little bit. Uh, while we still wait for the numbers to get a little bit higher, what I'd like you to do is here on YouTube, there's a comment section. Let me do it over here, and I've got a keyboard right in front of me. So I will be the first one. So this is what I'd like you to do. I would like you to indicate that you are here. So right now I just signed in. And then the next thing that I want you to do is to go to your cell phone. Okay, go to your cell phone. And on the sheet that I gave you when you came to pick up your material, you have my phone number. And I want you to text me that you are here. All right. So I should be seeing my phone light up in a little bit saying that you are here. You're going to be using your phone quite a bit uh, tonight, probably more than most evenings uh, because we've got to do some paperwork to get things going. And I want to make sure that I have all the material that I need so the state knows that you are here indeed in this program. So please text me your name. Um... Most of the classes that we have will be done with the textbook, all right? Responsible driving. Now I'm starting to see people sign in. This is awesome. Great, great. Everybody's catching on. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Libby. Uh, Hunter, Joey, Holden, Tyler, Carter, um, Ari, Jacob, Ben. Good, good. Good to see everybody jumping in. Um, this is going to probably be a little bit different than what you're accustomed to with high school, whether you're doing it through Microsoft meetings or doing it through Zoom. So you're not going to be seeing your classmates. You're going to only be seeing me. It's going to be your basic um, instruction. Let me just stop the music here a little bit. It's just going to be basic instruction um, throughout the night. I will ask a question and I'm going to say, please text in your answer on the comment section. If it's something that I think is just a little bit, uh, oh, if you can't comment on Facebook, I mean on YouTube, that's fine. Just make the comments and sign in here on your phone. That's the most important thing. So that's good. All right. So we're, we're getting, getting off on a good foot. So no one's going to be watching you. That's the one thing I, I heard there were some pi uh, privacy situations with uh, Zoom when it started about a year ago. 
And uh, I wanted to kind of lean away from that because I'm more uh, of an Apple guy. And I found this program. This program that I'm on right now is called Ecamm. Um, let me just kind of get out of here for a second. This is basically what we're going to be covering tonight. So this is my PowerPoint. So I can just fly it right into the screen right in front of my face. And basically, if I have to drop things in, like right there, I'm dropping in available drive times for tomorrow. Um, it's wide open. I haven't scheduled anybody from uh, a previous class. So tomorrow's drive times, I'm going to leave that up right now so you can just take a look at it. I believe Wednesday's wide open for most Oyster River students. So look at the times, 9, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, that's what I'm available tomorrow. So at the very end of tonight's class, I'm going to want you, not now, don't do it now because there's so much more that I want to do with the phones. Um, I don't want you to be texting me about drive times while I'm teaching class. I, I will, will take the time necessary, uh, at the end and I will correspond back and forth with you on times that I want to drive with you. But we're ready to rock and roll. We're ready to go. Um, clean slate this week, which means that I have most of my days open. Definitely tomorrow. Thursday, I've got a few people already scheduled. Friday's wide open. Saturday's uh, wide open. But we're going to really talk about how do we sign up? Uh, what do we do when we go out driving with a driving instructor? What is the state going to look at? So tonight is really kind of an overview. Let me just kind of get out of what we have for availability here. So most of you already know that is my uh, phone number since you've been texting me, which is really good. Uh, that is not just a random student. That is my second child. That is my daughter. And I am so happy that she came to visit today. She is uh, in the next room next to me. She lives in Massachusetts now, but she is up visiting for a few days. Uh, when she was 16, she did have to take a driver's ed program. So this was me taking her out for a drive. And I said, I want to use our picture for our PowerPoint. And she said, sure, not a problem, Dad. So that's my daughter. So the registration material was basically explained quite thoroughly on Eventbrite. If your parents need any more information from me of uh, what to expect uh, with rules and regulations, but we're going to kind of go through the rules and regulations a little bit tonight. They can always refer back to Eventbrite for the material which is written, or they can even watch tonight's video. All these videos that we do every single night that I'm teaching is recorded. So after we're done tonight's class, you can go tomorrow morning, uh, actually later tonight probably, and it will already be downloaded. So if you missed anything, uh, I was talking too fast or you quite didn't understand something and you didn't want to ask me a question, you can go back and get the material because it's been recorded, which is kind of cool. But tonight is just an introduction to the driver's ed program. Uh, I do need a copy of a birth certificate. Some people have started to send that in to me whether it be through email, um, you can do that. You can take a picture and text it to me. Some On Saturday when we did a material pickup, people brought their birth certificate, so I do have um, some. Now, I need a copy. I do not need original. The state uh, wants proof of age when you're taking driver's ed, so I've got to make sure that you are old enough to take driver's ed. I don't think anybody snuck in, so just to go off from the top, that you need to be turning 16 within the next three months from today's date. So we're looking, if your birthday is after June 30th, you don't turn 16 until after June 30th, then this program is not the program. And if you are, and I think I've checked most birthdays, but if I happen to miss one, if you don't turn 16 until July, you've got to text me and let me know when we've got to slide you to a different program. So I can't have you in the wrong program. So I need proof of your age uh, to do the paperwork because the state needs to know who's enrolled in driver's ed because we've got to start the process of you getting your license. And that starts with tonight's class. Once you've completed driver's ed, you will get a certificate indicating that you've completed, and we'll talk more about this, the classroom, the driving, the observing. So there, there are some 
hurdles that we've got to get over. And I am here to help you get over those hurdles. So before we do that, I think it's really important that you get to know a little bit about me because you're thinking, I'm taking driver's ed with this this old guy that's been at Oyster River for a long, long time. Uh, my friends say, you know, either he's a nice guy or maybe you've got friends that says, oh, no, you know, don't take it with him. But you only found out this is the only uh, open slot that you took. Well, hopefully I can prove your friends wrong, uh, that I will uh, treat you with respect and that it will be a program that you get something from. And hopefully you'll have a good time. I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been doing driver's ed for roughly 35 years. It hasn't been full time. Sometimes it was part time where I had a full time job, eight to five. And then on nights and weekends, I would uh, help out. Uh, actually, my dad started the business. So he's the one that started the driver's ed program. And when he retired, I decided I'd go into it full time. So I've been really at Oyster River full time, uh, probably for about 20 years. I've been there and uh, I've enjoyed all the students. I've really had a great experience so far at Oyster River. I know that some of you do not go to Oyster River. That's fine too. Uh, welcome to this driver's ed class. Uh, as long as you get the material, you do well. It doesn't matter where you take driver's ed. Uh, we just want to make sure that you are ready and that you are going to be a safe driver when you get out behind the wheel. Uh, about 25 years ago, I took a full-time job with the state of New Hampshire coordinating their uh, drunk driving program. Part of getting a license back after having a drunk driving conviction is taking an education course. So about five years, I was the point person. I was the program coordinator for the state of New Hampshire. And during that time, I served on a lot of different traffic safety boards. I've been on a lot of associations. I'm constantly trying to update material uh, information to give you the, the best um, information out there that you can utilize out there on the road to make you a, a, a better driver, a wiser driver. So it's uh, something that I always am looking at doing is changing my PowerPoint. I include videos. I do most of my teaching um, behind the PowerPoint. So right now I'm right behind the slide. And every once in a while, I'll put the slide down and we may have a face-to-face -face talk. But for the most part, it's giving you information, uh, you writing down notes. Now, I hope that you have a, a notebook and pen and pencil with you because this is a class. So I, I do want you to take notes. And I will tell you, if it's important, you should write it down. So I do not expect you to write every single word on every single slide that I give you. This is really to give you an overview of information on rules, on techniques, and statistics. And why do we give statistics? It shows you trends. It shows you where uh, driving is headed, uh, what to expect as you get older out on the roadway. Um, but not everything is going to be a test question. So don't think everything has to be written down. I try to keep the information that I get from you to a minimum because I know you have other classes going on and I don't want to overload you. I mean, this is driver's ed. It's not where I'm going to want typed papers with references and, you know, things like that. So your homework, when I let you go, and most nights it's right around 9 o'clock, the last half hour of class is to do the reading that's on that sheet of paper that I gave you of what's going to be covered in class. That is the time to kind of go through it, uh, try to answer the questions. Let me get out of here for a second. So let me get back to me. So responsible driving for tomorrow. Okay, I want you to read chapter one. And at the end of chapter one, I believe there are like 12 questions. So those 12 questions, I want you to write it on a piece of paper doesn't have to be a big piece of paper. Then take a picture of it and just text it to me. That's how I collect your homework. If you want to do it by email, you could do it through email. And email is tolldrivingschool at gmail. So tolldrivingschool at gmail. Or just write it down on a piece of paper and then just take a snapshot of it. And that's how I collect it. The state manual doesn't have questions. And I don't have a state manual right on my desk right now. It's behind me. 
but the state manual only has 11. The whole manual only has 11 questions. They don't do a very good job to help you review. So that is why we are going to do questions, not every night, um, but for the most responsible driving, we'll have some questions. But uh, when it comes to the state manual, I may throw a special test at you. Now, the way that I do that, let me kind of uh, get back out of this again and go to me. This is what I want you to look for. If you don't have Facebook, maybe your parents do. You can do it with your parents and just subscribe. Um, you're looking for Toll Driving School Remote Driver's Education class. This is where I post homework. So right now on this site, I posted tonight a pretest that I want everybody to, to do later tonight. Once we get at the very end of tonight's program, I will give you the password to get into that link. And you'll answer the questions and that will be part of your homework for tonight. So become a member. So you have to ask to join. So look for Toll Driving School Remote Driver's Education class under the search bar up above. Click on it. You'll see where it will ask you, you know, to join. And then I have to accept it. And then you'll be part of the group and part of the class. So that's how I do my worksheets and homework and things like that. Um, this is the date of our class. So hopefully you write this down. We start tonight, which is March 30th. We'll go to May 6th, which is a Thursday night. We meet Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evening from 7.30 to 9.30. Like I said, most classes will be done right around the 9 o'clock time frame. And then the last half hour is for you to do your worksheets, your homework, your quizzes, and things like that. Ask me questions. Because we're on about a 40-second delay, so right now what I'm saying, you're not going to hear it for about a minute. So if you respond to it, and you can, you can do the response right on the comment section of YouTube here, or you can uh, send a, a message on the phone, text message to me, and I'll get back to you after I close things out around nine o'clock. That way we can kind of go through a lot of material relatively quickly. Um, if you haven't paid already, you can Venmo me. The balance due is six twenty-five. Uh, if you don't have Venmo, you can give me a check, and the check needs to be made out to Toll Driving School. So as we start to schedule people this week, just show up with that copy, that um, check, and the copy of your birth certificate. That would be very helpful. So let's talk about driving. A lot of people say. Why missed a toll is at 16? You know, why can I drive with my parents at 15 and a half, but I can't get into driver's ed till I'm 15, nine months? I don't have a very good question or answer to that question. Some states, it's much younger than 16 getting a license, like my nephews in Nebraska received their license when they were like 15, a lot earlier. Uh, some states like New York, it's like 17, 17 and a half. So every state has their own rules and regulations to getting a driver's license. In New Hampshire, it's 16. The thing you need to remember, uh, 625, Lydia, um, I know it says 675, but you paid a $50 registration fee. So if you take the registration fee and add it to 625, the total cost is 675. That's how we came up with that, but that was a good question. Uh, usually, uh, this when I did this PowerPoint, I didn't do Eventbrite, but because of uh, COVID and everything, and I'm not really at the school anymore, you know, for class, we're doing everything online, so I had to do an online registration. I thought this was kind of an interesting article because it comes down to how old do you really need to be to drive a car? Can you drive a car at a younger age than 16? Absolutely. Can you drive it legally? No. But could you learn to drive a car when you're 9, 10, 11? Sure. As long as you can reach the pedals, re reach the steering wheel. So what I want you to write down, so like I said, I'm only going to tell you a few things 
that are important with every class. So if I say write it down, I mean write it down. There are only three things that you can do in an automobile to make it go. You can accelerate, you can brake, and you can steer. There are only three things that moves a vehicle. The braking, the accelerating, the steering. Once you learn how to do the combination of these three things, you'll be able to drive a vehicle down a road. But you can't just be good at one and terrible at two. Or even you can't be good at two things and horrible at one. So think about this. You can accelerate, no problem, get the car up to 30. You can keep the car between the yellow and the white line. But, man, I have an issue with braking. I can't stop at my stop lines. I almost hit cars in front of me. You're not going to be able to drive. You're going to crash the car. Or maybe you do brake well. You can stop at the stop lines. And you can basically keep the car on the roadway. But you don't feel comfortable going 30 miles per hour. The state will never give you a license. 30 is the, basically the minimum in most places. The minimum. We do have some places 20, 25, but for the most part, 30 is really the slowest speed. So if you don't feel comfortable going 30, you're not going to be able to drive. So in this article, I found a five-year-old that saw his parents start a car. So he knew where to put the key. He knew which one was the gas pedal. He knew, he knew which one was the brake. Hey, it's a steering wheel. It must be a lot like my bike that I have out in the yard. Well, he didn't get too far down the road. He started the car, put it in, in, in gear. But he couldn't navigate the first turn. So there, there does come a, a time where, where driving becomes ripe for learning, where you can put the mental aspect of driving and the physical aspect of driving together. And what we found is really between the ages of 16 and 18. So Nebraska, where my nephews, that's really too young. But because they're on farm equipment, they're not really going super fast, and they were kind of limited in where they could drive. Most states started around 16. So let's talk about the skill of driving. The lowest level of driving is assuming. You should never do things in life where you assume that it's okay. Like think of a traffic light. We know green means you can go through an intersection, and of course red means you can't. But some people assume yellow always means go. Sometimes yellow means stop. So you can't assume that that yellow light always means go. That yellow light does mean what it truly means is to clear the intersection. So depending on where you are, sometimes it's stopping, sometimes it's going. But maturity and experience helps create the knowledge base of what to do correctly. So above assumption is knowledge and then understanding, then wisdom, which is applied knowledge, then practice, then finally skill. So this is basically a hierarchy of learning. This is basically when you think of any skill. I think most of you right now have shoes on and you probably have shoelaces. I don't think anybody woke up this morning thinking, okay, I've got a shoelace to the left, a shoelace to the right. Now, how am I going to tie a knot? Do I go around to the left and then through and then I pull or do I? You just don't do that. You do it automatically. Driving is going to be the same thing. It's going to be a struggle at the beginning to put all this stuff together and then it's going to get easier. But that is where you're taking your knowledge, your wisdom through practice to put it all together. I... I don't want to burst your bubble, but most people think in the driver's ed car, we're just driving around. <laughs> that is the furthest from the truth of what is really happening in the car. It may seem that way to you, and I may not talk a lot. I mean, I try to, you know, strike up conversation. And I will always give you information that you're going to need up ahead of what to do left, right, you know, when you should be yielding, when you should be stopping. But for the most part, I'm not going to, you know, be chit-chatting. Um, if you got questions, I'll be more than, you know, ob oblige you to answer any question that you ask me, but I want you to be concentrating on driving. Um, do I play music sometimes, but it's always all pretty low. It's not probably 
what it is when you're driving with your parents or with your friends. It's going to be a little bit lower than that because uh, music can be somewhat of a distraction. But what I want you to understand is that in the 10 hours that you have with me, and we'll talk more about this in a moment, um, I'm looking specifically of how skilled you are on certain driving techniques. And I've got to assess what your ability is and try to raise that bar. Try to make you a little bit of a better driver on the limited time that I, that I have you. I try to get over or get through most of the driving skills that you will encounter on a driving test with the state. But with some people, because we need more work on certain aspects of our driving, we may not actually get to that. But we'll talk, like I said, uh, a couple slides from here. Anyone can know and understand something and even do it successfully once or twice. We call that luck. Have you ever seen someone throw a basketball like from, you know, half court and they swish it? And it's amazing. Everybody goes crazy when that happens. But if you ask them to do the same thing again, they probably miss. And you go, oh, do it again. Then they probably miss. Just because you do it once doesn't mean that you can do it successfully. So what we need to do is to be going through these skills, you know, you know, three times, five times, eight times, 12 times, 15 times, routine, 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 and doing it. And, and by the way, I love this, this terminology. I love this. I've heard this once. You don't practice something till you get it right. You practice it till you don't get it wrong. Because a lot of people, once you get it right, you think, oh, I'm done. Let's go on to something else. No, you just keep practicing it. If you played any instrument, you know it's scales. It's understanding uh, notes. If you're a basketball player, they do layups before a game. I mean, you've done millions of layups if you're a basketball player and you've played over the years. You do things routinely. It's to keep things fresh, keep things right, so they never, ever go bad. Oh, here it is. You don't practice something till you get it right. You practice something until you don't get it wrong. It's kind of cool is that uh, Gino uh, Oriyama, the U UConn basketball coach, is in a championship or Sweet 16, I think. He's a very good coach. His teams routinely go undefeated. He knows what he's doing. So I love his terminology here. Um, the only thing here, and I thought this was kind of a, a neat thing that I saw on Facebook uh, a, a while ago. Uh, the only thing I want to mention about this is that you can have knowledge and you can work really hard at something and still not be very good. Uh, I really think, and I want you to write this down, is your attitude will go a long way with me. I will work with you, whether it be the material in the class or whether it be about your driving. I will work with you if I know that you're matching your effort with a good attitude. If I see a bad attitude, you know, I'm just going to let you just, you know, suffer through it because you, you, you're just approaching it the wrong way and you're going to have to learn the hard way. But a, a good attitude will always get you further in life. Always. And driving is no different. Um, and I think this is kind of cool. I found um, a clip from Karate Kid. Now, I'm pretty old. Um, I remember the original, which was probably back in the 70s. So we're looking at or 80s. It's at least 40, 50 years old. But they did a newer version not too long ago, maybe, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, Will Smith's kid is the uh, main actor here. But why do we practice? Why does repetition? Why do we do things with repetition. I want to show you this clip. I really, really like this clip and I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. Hand up your jacket. Take it down. Put it on. Take it off. I already did. Jacket off. Kung Fu. You've seen how we put on the jacket. Be strong. Take off the jacket. And you've seen how we treat people. Everything. It's Kung Fu. Check it out! What I really like about that video clip is when the student looks at his hands 
and he's thinking to himself, did I just do that? How did I know how to do that? It's because of repetition. Like I said about tying a shoe, you don't think about today how to tie a shoe. You just do it. It's because you've done it so many times. It becomes automatic. And then his sensei, his trainer, is nodding his head and saying, yes, this is why I make you do it over and over again. Okay, so don't, you know, question me when I bring you to a parking lot for angle parking and you've done three spectacular angle parking spots. I mean, they were perfect. You're probably thinking, okay, we're going to get out on the road. We're going to just drive down the road, do some intersections or, you know, maybe go on the highway or something. If I say today is angle parking, we're going to be angle parking. We're going to do it to the left. We're going to do it to the right. We're going to do it in one parking lot, then go to a different parking lot. Because different parking lots, um, not all the spots are the same. And some of them have more of a challenge. And we'll talk more about that when we actually get into the car. But I just want you to let, let you in on this little secret. You've never really thought of this, but parking lots are not all the same. They are a little bit different. So you're going to have to wait and see how they're a little bit different. Um when your parents signed up on Eventbrite, that is like the permission slip. I basically teach driver's ed all these years um, to teach you to be a safe driver. You're here because you want your license, which probably means independence and freedom. I get it. I really do get it. Um, I don't think your parents want you to crack up the, you know, crash the family car. So they've got you here because they want you coming home at night. You're here because you want to go to the movies at night. Sometimes these two things conflict and you've got to understand that even though your parents have signed you up and they want you to get a license, I will tell you because it happened last week with one of my students. It happens in all my classes that you get near the very end of driver's ed and you think, oh, Mr. Toll is going to give me my paperwork. I'm going to make my application online and I'm going to get my license in the next two or three weeks. And then all of a sudden your parents go. Let's take a look and see what your grades look like at the end of the semester. Let's see how much you're going to contribute to the insurance premiums that we have to pay. We think that you should have some skin in the game. That you should pay for insurance or gas. And all of a sudden you're going, well, we didn't talk about that a month ago, two months ago, when I first started. The, the conversation is going to change. Right now they don't have to say anything. Because you're so far away from getting your license right now. But I will tell you right now. This class will go by fast. Most people at the beginning go, oh my goodness, five, six weeks. That's a long time. At the beginning it is. But when you get halfway, three quarters of the way around, you're thinking, wow, I can't believe we only got three, four more classes left. Even my, my students from last class that finished up the last, oh, three or four days, they go, wow, Mr. Toll, you were right. I can't believe that I've already gone through your whole program and I've got all my driving in with you. If you make a schedule with driving with me and getting your homework in, I will get you done. I will get you done. Now, like I said, this class is a little bit bigger than uh, most classes that I've had this year. So it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. But uh, you've got to remember, you need 40 hours with your parents before you go for your license. Ten of those hours need to be at night. If you haven't been filling out that 40 hour log. So let me get out of here for a second. This is the 40 hour log. Boom. All right. Now I gave you a link. You're going to have to type it in because it's not a digital link that you can click on. But when you picked up your, your material, I gave you a list of hyperlinks that you could type into the search bar of Google or whatever, you know, internet web browser that you have and you can find this if you need a copy let me know i could probably um get one for you get you a hard copy but this is where you're going to be filling out your 40 hours so let me explain that when it says start and end time you do have to write that down with am and pm uh, put down whether it's going to be in the daytime column or the nighttime column and by the way nighttime is a little bit later now that we've moved the clocks um ahead so it doesn't get dark till around seven o'clock seven fifteen 
So you're going to need 10 hours. So it could be 30 hours a day, could be 10 hours at night, or it could be like 20 hours at night, 20 hours during the day, but at least 10 hours has to be nighttime driving. Now, with skill practice, and this is where people do not fill it out correctly, please put down some type of driving skill you worked on. Do not put driving. Do not put um, uh, back roads. Do not put... Um, Put intersections, put uh, traffic lights, put um, angle parking, perpendicular parking, parallel parking, merging, lane changes. Do a skill. Just don't put driving. And it has to be filled out. It cannot be on. There's a digital app, and I'll show you what the digital app looks like. Um, it's called Road Ready. And if you look for it in the app store, Road Ready, you can actually uh, keep track on your phone. But you got to print it out. You can't just show them your phone, but you do have to do your 40 hours. So that is important. Um, we're going to have 30 hours of classroom. There's going to be some tests. There are going to be some worksheets that you have to do. So I want you to keep up with the assignments. Like I said, Facebook is going to have most of the larger ones. But your basic reading, like I mentioned earlier tonight, is read the chapter, do the 10 or 12 questions, just shows me that you did the reading, and send me what your answers are. 10 hours of driving we're going to do. We're going to start that tomorrow, so hopefully some of you have already looked at the time frames that I put on the board earlier tonight, that you'll sign up for that. Now, observation is going to be done with your parents. It used to be you had to sit in the back of the driver's ed car while someone else drove, you heard me do instruction. I would ask you some questions. That counted as your observation. Now your parents are doing it with you. So I have to give you an observation form. Now I'll probably be posting that on the Facebook page a little bit later tonight or tomorrow. Um, and if you drive tomorrow, I can actually give you a hard copy. I've printed out some hard copies. With the no-show fine, please let me know about um, if you sign up. I want you to try to keep that appointment, but I understand because of the situation that we're in. I had someone this morning call me. I, I like to have at least four hours a notice. I know some driving schools twenty do 24 hours notice. Um, I think that's kind of unreasonable if you're driving at 8 or 9 in the morning and you wake up and you don't feel good. So the minute you know, let me know. Even if it's you know 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night and you just don't feel good when you go to bed, and you say, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it in the morning. That is helpful. It is helpful. But if you don't text me at all, okay, or call me, there's going to be a $30 fine. I've got someone from two classes ago, and I will not drive with him. He's from January. He took the class in January. I will not drive with him because he's missed two driving appointments. All right? So there's nothing worse than sitting in a car waiting for somebody that doesn't show up. Um. Don't be absent. I want you here on time for classes. If you can't make it, you need to contact me and say, Mr. Toll, something came up. I'm not going to be at class at 730, but I should be there at 8 o'clock. That's fine. Let me know. And then sign in like I told you. So, uh, James, it's good to see that you just jumped in, but you need to text me. Same thing with Sonia. Okay, you need to text me and say what time that you came in so I know basically when you jumped in. I see it on the comments, but I'm going to lose these comments after tonight's class. But on your phone, I've got a running record. And the state needs to know that you actually were attending. So your attendance is your text messages. We can, because the phone company is going to keep this message. So I can always go back six months from now and say, well, you know, this is when they were here and when they weren't here. So I need you to text me in your attendance. Um, let's talk about driving. So please write this down. I, at least for the first two times driving, I need you to meet me at the high school. And I'm usually out in front of the high school where the school sign is. Now, if it's right after school at 3 o'clock, I'll probably be parked on Code Drive somewhere opposite of where that school sign is. Okay, so just walk across the street and I will be on Code Drive because it gets too crazy when parents pick people up. So tomorrow, 
if people want to drive at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, all those times will be open. I will be at the high school. You're going to be picked up at, let's say you want 10 o'clock, um, be there a little bit before 10 o'clock, and have your parents there a little bit before 11. Before all of you drive, I, um, oh, that's a good question. Sam, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I should have mentioned it when we talked about the time frame. Uh, very good question. There will not be any classes during April vacation. I will only drive. So anybody that wants to drive, I'll drive the whole week. But we won't have class at night. Because I think some people are so, uh, you know, fed up with this COVID stuff that I think a lot of people travel during April vacation, February vacation, because they just got to get away. Go to their beach house, go to their lake house, go. If they can travel by plane, they just want to get away. And I don't blame you. Okay. So those that are staying behind, I will drive with. So once again, meet me at the school um, a little bit before your drive time. I have to wipe down the car. I wipe it down thoroughly. I do not expect you. And we talked about not showing up. Uh, the girl that had to cancel out today is that she was notified um, by the school. She doesn't go to Oyster River anymore. She was at Oyster River two weeks ago and she's just moved or she wants to go to Cole Brown now. But Cole Brown has a problem with some positive COVID test. So till she gets her test back, she's not going to be able to drive. So she had to cancel out from her four o'clock. Uh, but she told me early this morning. So she had no fine to pay. So please do that. Uh, I had to quarantine with us because of a student uh, probably about a month, month and a half ago until I got my test results, which was negative. So if you do not feel well, you're not supposed to come drive. So we're talking about the fever. We're talking about, um, you know, chills. We're talking, you know, you know, the whole routine with COVID. Now to let you know, I have taken one of the COVID shots the uh, vaccination shots. I am scheduled to do the second one probably in the next two weeks. When they did it at the high school, um, the principal allowed me to, you know, to get it. So I'm taking the precaution of making sure that I do not get it and spread it. So I want you to know that. Um, I drive six days a week. I drive Monday to Saturday. And I will start at 8 o'clock or before 8 o'clock if people want to drive, depending on what um, you're able to do. And I will drive on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday till 6 o'clock. On Mondays and Fridays, I will drive till 7 o'clock. And then on Saturday, I'll go from 8 to 6 if I have to. But I want on Saturday, you know, to be driving every hour. I don't want someone to take 8 o'clock and then someone to take 11 o'clock. Then the next one's at two o'clock because then I'm not sitting in my car two hours waiting for my next driver. So if I can kind of build up a schedule, then I will continue to drive. I think most of you know, if you've had friends that have taken driver's ed with me, that they will tell you that if you ask Mr. Toll for a drive time, he will find one for you. And he usually, if you keep on asking him, he will try to schedule at least the two times. What I'm looking for is twice a week. If we can do twice a week, that'd be awesome. But I know it's not always possible. And this is a big class. Twice a week, that's 46 hours of driving I would have to do. I don't think I've, you don't have the time, and I don't think I can squeeze it in those six days quite that much. Um, but we should be able to drive at least twice to three times every two weeks. All right, so that's what I'm looking for. All right. Um. Later tonight, we'll kind of go through what I need from information because the Eventbrite didn't give me everything that I need. So we're going to have to do that in just a little bit. Uh, please respect the vehicle. Um, so try to miss potholes. Try not to go through bushes. Um, we don't have snow banks anymore. But a lot of people say, well, Mr. Tull, what would happen if I crashed the driver's ed car? Um yeah, it's okay, Libby, for uh, shorter drives. Absolutely. Uh, what I used to do with my kids is that we'd break it down into 15, 20 minute increments. And once I got um, three to four 15, 20 minute rides, then I would just put an hour's worth of driving and I'd put intersections, city driving, 
uh, highway driving, if it was like, you know, going to visit relatives, stuff like that. But yeah, uh, you, you can, if you do it 15, 20 on every, every line, you're going to have like, you know, six pages. So I would say accumulate a good amount of time, like an hour, hour and a half, and just lump them all together. And there's no way that they're going to verify. So as long as your parents sign off on it, they're going to, you know, believe it's the truth. But that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if you can read the cartoon here. It says, don't worry, dear. I'm sure he's more afraid of you than you are of him. I will tell you right now, when you come to drive with me, you're going to be nervous. <laughs> you're, you're Because you have never driven a car. I have a white Camry. Um, and you're going to be thinking, oh, no, everything I do wrong, he's going to write it down. He's going to he's going to think I'm a horrible driver. You know, I'm not going to pass driver's ed. For the most part, everybody passes driver's ed. OK, that's the start off. Now, some of you may take longer because you don't do well in class and you don't test out well. I'll work with you. That's OK. Uh, the driving part, I usually will lay off driving if you're not ready. I've got three or four people from my last class that really aren't ready to go for their license because I know that they wouldn't pass and plus they don't have their 40 hours in with their parents but I'm going to give you your paperwork when I think that you're ready to go for your driver's test if you crash the car you crash the car I've never had a student crash the car so you'll be you'll be the first I have been over a million and a half miles over a million and a half miles with students and I've never had a student be responsible for a bad car crash now, have we hit the curb? Have we hit bushes? Have we been in a, in a, a soft shoulder? Have we been in snow banks? Yes. Have we spun the car around? Yes. Have we had to slam on the brakes before? Yes. We've done it all. It doesn't matter. You're here to learn. I'll, I'll tell you right now. <clears throat> let me get out of here for a second. Starting to lose my, my voice. I've got my, my seltzer here. Yeah, yeah. I love this stuff. Polar seltzer. I'm not a holler. I, I don't swear. I, I don't holler. Now, you may hear my voice get up a little higher, like break, break, break. Um, and I will repeat something that I want you to do, like turn, 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 turn. Um, but I don't find that you're going to learn well if I'm screaming at you or if I'm, you know, belittling what you do, because that's the level that you're at. Okay. I've got to be very careful that I don't push you to a level that you're not capable of handling. So with some of you, we'll be starting in parking lots. With some of you, we'll be on back roads. With some of you that have done 20, 30 hours with your parents, we're going to go right downtown Durham, Dover on the first time out driving because that's where you're at. It's to move that level of your skill forward, always trying to get a little bit better, getting challenged as a driver. Okay, What's going to make me a better driver? Maybe higher speeds, maybe more pedestrians, maybe more traffic. So little by little, you've got to start introducing all these things into your drive. But don't worry, there's nothing you're going to do in the car that I haven't already seen. Believe me, I, I have, I've had people stop at a green light. I've had people try to go through a red light. I've had a ton of people go through stop signs, or at least try to go through stop signs. And by the way, I do have a, an instructor break, so I'm not going to let you, you know, do that on purpose. Um, so... Make sure that you do your homework on time. Uh, here's a big one. Write this down. Sunglasses, really important. Early morning, late afternoon. Wear something that's comfortable. No cell phones in class. I don't want you on your cell, excuse me, on your cell phone while I'm teaching. Um, you should be listening to class. Definitely don't want you looking for your phone in your pocket while you're driving or while it's vibrating. Um, so just, you know, be attentive to what we're trying to do, whether it be here on class or in the car. Um, what are your parents like? And I thought this was an interesting thing. This I don't know if any of you know Steve Harvey, but Steve Harvey um, did a thing on, on teaching his kids how to drive. Um, put this right down, and we'll do it on, and that's kind of fun. For YouTube, for those of you that can make a comment, just let's have some fun. Write down in the comment section on YouTube of the two parents that you have, which one would you rather drive with? Which one are you more comfortable with? Write down mom or dad. And if it really doesn't matter, um, say, 
I'm, they're both fine. It's always good. Um, uh, Sammy's got a question. When we start to drive, is it okay if we ask to practice a skill that we uh, prefer, prefer for that day? Not normally. Normally, Sammy, I have a schedule that I want to go over, and I usually do, do it in progression. Now, when we get around the sixth or seventh timeout, uh, I do I, I may give you a choice like do you want to do the highway today or do you want to do backing into parking spots? So depending where we are, but the first like three or four drives, we're always going to um, be on a certain schedule. The other person that had a question on road ready, um, what if you want to record our driving on road when we're driving with you? You can't do that. Uh, road ready does not or the state does not allow you to to count your 10 hours with me. So you're doing 40 hours with your parents and 10 hours with me. So when you go for your driver's license, uh, it will be a total of 50 hours when you go for your driver's exam. Um, it's interesting. It's kind of split on what people, I, I would almost say looks like dad is winning. Dad is winning for being the person to drive with. Uh, it's surprising. A lot of people like, like mom on on previous classes but i'm i'm scrolling right now and it looks like everybody is putting putting down dad which is kind of cool i'm glad that uh, dad is taking the initiative and uh teaching you how to drive that's awesome well let me show you steve uh steve harvey and of course he's doing this for his tv show so he's trying for uh comedic uh responses so he's trying to make a laugh on a, on a few of these things so let's take a look at uh, steve teaching his son and daughter how to take turns in peril park a couple of rules that we got to talk about when you get in the car we already know you're supposed to do what put on your seatbelt. put on your seatbelt. hands on the wheel where Ten Ten and two. because it does what helps you handle the vehicle nothing in that car is more important for you than that break. It can help you get out of a lot of situations. Are you nervous? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Are you nervous? Uh-uh. <laughs> What's the most important thing of driving? I just gave it to you outside. What's the most important thing of the conversation? The break, the break, the break, the break. <laughs> Let me just see how you handle the car. All, All right. right, let's go. You want me just press to start? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On that curve, you never even touched the brake. You never even took your foot off the gas. Are you kidding me? This is too fast. This is too fast? Yeah, it's too fast. Too fast. Brakes, brakes, cut, cut, slow down. I don't know what it is you don't like about the brake. Okay, so you just hit the car. You just, you just hit the car. You gotta drive your car. You gotta keep driving. You just cut the windshield wipers. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, now let's turn the windshield wipers off. Dad, how do I turn them off? Yeah, just first of all, calm down. It ain't a pet. Go. Just. What you doing? Wait, we need brakes. We need yeah, brakes. We need brakes. We just ran into the car again. <laughs> hey man, stop the car. You whispered it so softly <laughs> that I thought you meant when we got up to here. Stop the car! Let's go. We did okay, but I'm glad these weren't cars out here. Because we tore these people car up three times. <laughs> now we're gonna go to parallel parking. What do you think the key to parallel parking is? The brake. Yes, yes. Because if you don't touch the brake when you parallel park it, what do we do? Hit a car. Hit a car? No, we tear a car up. So you're trying to fit this vehicle into this spot right here. Mm, you see this car back here? Mm -hmm. You do. Yes, sir, but what do you want me to do? Not hit it. Start your cut. Very deep, but slow, slow. On your brake, on your brake. Start braking. Bam. 
and we just drove up in these people's engine. I think overall, I think we did pretty good. I think we're gonna get better. I'd have to give you, based on first time, a B minus. If you text and drive, you lose your driving privileges for how long? Three years. Three years, Three years of driving privileges and one year of solitary confinement. <laughs> chained up in the basement next to the washing machine. <laughs> okay, one of the things that he did discuss with his kids that I think is really important, I think your parents probably knew this when they started to drive with you, is because they didn't have another brake pad or brake pedal over on the passenger side. So when you're learning to drive with your parents, learning how to brake is by far the most important thing to learn how to do well, when to do it and how to use it correctly. So brake is number one. The second thing to learn how to do is to turn the wheel. Notice they were going into cones. You need to know how much to turn the wheel to the left or to the right, whether you're in drive or reverse, to make the car go where you want it to. You can see that they were pretty inexperienced. So these were new drivers. They certainly were. Um, and then lastly, uh, accelerating. I'm not really concerned about going the speed limit all the time. I'm more concerned about your position on the road, your merit checks, and whether you're going to be able to stop and slow down when you need to. I mean, we want to be somewhat close to the speed limit, uh, but if it's 30 and you're going 25, 26, I'm happy. Um, I'm more concerned if you go too fast because then you're going to have to slow down and brake, and that's where if you don't brake well, it could be pretty bad if we're going a little bit faster than normal. Um, I'm not going to go through everything that's up here. Um, what is up here basically is when your parents drive with you. And we're going to see this in a moment. I went to a conference probably about five years ago. And I met him, uh, an individual. His name was Andy Pilgrim. And I'm going to do a, a couple video clips that uh, Andy uh, did for us. Uh, he developed a DVD program. He was into uh, computers. He came over from England, started his own company, and he, for a hobby, he raced cars. He, he loved driving, and after he made a ton of money with his business, he decided to get out of it and just focus on racing and really helping teach young drivers how to drive responsibly and safely. So he said, well, maybe I'll make a DVD for parents to you know, help them teach their son and daughter how to drive. So he uh, came out to a conference that I attended and handed out these DVDs, and I like using some of his material. So we're going to see that in a moment. But if you look at the, the top couple bullets here, learning to drive really is, is, is understanding what needs to be done. Now, we can do the classroom, and the classroom is to lay down a foundation of a basic understanding of like intersections and rules of the road. We can talk about behavior and attitude, too, while we're here online. But for the most part, you're being taught in a car while it's moving. So someone is saying, go slower, turn right, turn left, look in your mirrors, and you're just doing what someone tells you to. So you're basically be like our puppet. So we're drive, whether it be your parents or me, we're telling you how to drive, and you're just doing it. Now, the less we say, the less we communicate with you, the more we're really giving you the reins of the vehicle of driving. So parents, very important that your parents explain what they want you to do. So let me give you an example. We're going to see this in the video with Andy in a minute. Once we're driving down the road, you're going to hear a lot from me is I will say in about a quarter of a mile, we're going to come to an intersection. At the intersection, we're going to turn left. So already in your mind, you're thinking, okay, I know there's going to be a traffic light coming up. He told me he wants me to go left. As we get closer, then I'm going to say when to reduce your speed, maybe not brake, but just let go of the, the, the accelerator. Now check your rearview mirror, left side mirror, put your signal on, work on your stop at the stop line. So I'm telling you specifically what I want you to do. Most of the time that I'm telling you things that I want you to do will be things the state will test you on. Look at driver's ed is I am giving you the answers to a test. 
really think about it. Your your driver's license exam is a test. It's a eye test. It's a written test, and it's a driving test. I can't give you the eye test, so that's going to be between you and your eye doctor. Though I highly recommend if you have bad eyes to get them checked right now, because you don't want that to hold you up from getting your license. But I'm going to be testing you written material or giving you written material to test your knowledge so you can go pass your written test with the state. I'm going to be taking you out into different driving environments, teaching you different uh, techniques of driving so you will do well on your driving test. But down in the middle of this slide here, it talks about parents and teens. Now, they did, and this was done through Liberty Mutual, and this was years ago. They found that your parents are your biggest influencers. They mod You model your behavior. If you want to see what type of driver you are, Look at your parents drive in, in three to year in about three years, three to four years, you are going to be exactly like your mother or your dad when you drive. Very rarely do kids drive differently than their parents. They usually mimic their driving behavior of their parents. If their parents use their mirrors a lot, they're being taught that your parents are stressing it. They do it. They're telling you to do it. You'll probably do it. If they never check their mirrors or never use their signals, they're not making you do that. You're going to probably have to do it for me because I'm going to make you do it. But once you get away from me, then you're going to revert back to what your parents let you do. Go above the speed limit, not use your signal, not use your mirrors. You're going to be more like that, more than what I'm trying to get you to be like. So let me show you a little bit about Andy so, so you have a basic understanding. So let's just do an introduction to Andy and let's hear his story. In 1989, I started an IT consulting business in South Florida, and in 1998, I became a U.S. citizen. I'm probably best known as a professional race driver and have been racing for over 27 years. So far in my professional racing career, I've won five championships and over 60 races. My sports car career has spanned driving in one-hour sprint races up to 24-hour races and all over the world. I was even fortunate enough to run the 24 Hours of Daytona with NASCAR legends Dale Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 2001, and several NASCAR road course races since then. On the education side, I've been speaking about the dangers of distracted driving to high school students since 1994. The most important link between race driving and driving on the street is concentration and paying attention. I have to use all my concentration while racing and at all times in my street driving. We all know that having a driver's license does not automatically make someone a good and safe driver. I produced the Driving Zone 2 DVD in 2011 to help driver education teachers with new information they can use in the classroom. This information is totally up to date and addresses the knowledge new drivers desperately need to help them survive the early years of street driving. Thousands of copies have been requested so far by public school driver education teachers and my foundation has given them away at no charge to the schools or the teachers. I work to educate new drivers because too many of them are having collisions and crashes and many with fatal consequences. That does not have to happen. I know that knowledge and education definitely helps. Along with using my own driving knowledge and skills, I've gained information from speaking with thousands of young people and parents. I have also spoken with many other driving professionals, such as police officers and driving education experts, including people from the NHTSA and highway experts at other federal agencies. This production brings all the best data I have gathered over the years, together with the most up-to-date knowledge and information available. In order to get the most out of your time here, please make sure you've turned your phone off before we continue with the... Let me explain how I came to make this parent-focused driving video. I have been speaking with driver education teachers for many years. On numerous occasions, we discussed how parent driving behavior was both positively and negatively affecting new drivers. We knew the negative effects outweighed the positive, but had never understood the real extent of the problem until recent research studies were published. These new studies give data on exactly how much parent driving behavior affects their children's driving. Some of them show that 70 to 75% of new drivers drive with the same distractions and distracted driving behavior they've learned from watching their parents drive as they grew up. Now, 70 to 75% is a huge number. We have other data that backs this up. Another study asked young drivers, 
Who was their biggest influence on how they drive? Again, 75% said it was their parents, well ahead of friends, laws, police, driver's ed, and tragic stories. Permit year is when children actually start to drive a vehicle on the roads. They will be starting a learning process that never ends. All of the states have their own rules and laws regarding learner drivers. Some states allow new drivers to obtain a driver's permit at 14 and a half, others at 15, on up to 16. The states also refer to these driving permits in many different ways, as you can see here. Some states require these learner drivers to drive with a supervising adult passenger for six months, but most up to a year. The states also have different ages when a new driver can progress to a full or probationary license. To keep things simple, I'm going to refer to this very important learning time as permit year throughout this production because most states require 12 months before a learner driver can progress to their full license. Please check the websites listed for more information. Every day I learn something new about driving or see something happen on the roads I never saw before. If you think driving is boring, then you're not engaged enough in the driving process. Changes are constant on the roads and it's the duty of all drivers to be ready. Being aware and prepared keeps drivers much safer over the years. Driver education teachers have mandated curriculums. They have to spend time on things such as laws, statistics, street signs and road markings. My focus in the parent driving zone and the driving zone too is to provide an understanding of the dangers of distracted driving and provide information to help the new driver survive those critical early years. I want to make a few points before parents sign off on the driving permit. Remember, it is up to you to give permission to start the driving process for your child. When it comes to driving, the balance between laws and personal responsibility are provided by education, wise choices, and reasoned actions. Make sure your house is in order. If you know from watching The Driving Zone 2 and the prior information presented here that you have been guilty of distracted driving behaviors, then the very first thing I recommend is a sit-down session to address this with your child or children. You need to do this whether your child has shown interest in driving or not. Tell them you had never thought about many of the things you've learned here before and are going to change your distracted driving behavior. It's possible you had ignored good information and even the pleas of your own children to put your phone away. Please never ignore your children if they bring up your distracted driving. I hear this from children of all ages these days. Remember, your children are not in your vehicle that much. The phone use and all driving distractions can certainly wait until you're safely parked. If you stick to your behavior changes, your child will see this and ultimately understand you are trying to change for them. It's never too late to set a safer example. In many cases, distracted driving behavior such as answering a phone, messing with papers, or drinking coffee while driving has become automatic. Work as a team. Encourage your children to remind you and help you. Have your child turn your phone off or put it in the trunk or glove box for you. I do not think your child should be relaying phone messages or texts. Every time you are using the phone with a child in the vehicle, other than for an emergency, you are choosing convenience now over safety for your child later. Cut out all distractions, stay in the driving zone, and just drive. Parents need to know the laws regarding graduated licensing and the laws for the probationary driving periods after the permit year. The websites listed give information for all parents to help them find guidelines for their state. We are going to talk about the guardian principles of mobility. These are key words and principles that many driver educators, including myself, use to bring gravity and meaning to this lifetime career we all know as driving. Here are the principles. Judgment. You understand the power you possess while driving and your decisions will reflect this awesome reality. Courtesy. You think of other road users and will always be considerate. Choice. You understand you have a choice before making any decision behind the wheel. Responsibility. You own and are responsible for everything you do and don't do while driving a vehicle. Awareness. 
you know you have to be aware at all times to help you see the constant changes going on all around you. I strongly suggest you ask your child to come up with another word or principle that they can call their own. Many drivers I have spoken to come up with some great words and principles. The fundamental understandings of driving come up next. These fundamentals add gravity and reality to the driving discussion and are extremely important points. All new drivers should appreciate and be aware of these fundamentals. 1. Driving is not a right. 2. Driving is a privilege that comes with responsibilities. 3. Driving is different. Driving is the only thing that most of us will ever do on a daily basis that has the ability to kill and injure self, friends, family, and even people we don't know. This section I call Safe House. This information can make all new driving students a lot more comfortable about learning to drive with a parent or guardian. This is a combination of contract and team effort. Let me explain. It is no secret that parents and children sometimes have arguments and relationship issues. It's just a fact of life. So, we need to make any vehicle you teach your child to drive in a safe house. For example, if you're in the middle of any kind of argument or issue with your child, and then an hour later you are supervising their driving, safe house means that whatever it was that you were arguing about or discussing the hour before cannot be brought up at all in the vehicle by either of you. Supervised driving time is too important for distracting emotions to be involved. You are a team. You both have a responsibility to work on the safe house agreement. The adult or parent doing the driving supervision is always the second set of eyes. Remember, high emotions, anger and aggressiveness are all driving distractions. There is another important point in the safe house agreement. I would advise you to set up an alarm word that can remind you both that a subject is out of bounds. You can find any word that when said, both of you know to change the subject. Just one word. Use a word that makes sense. A word like cyclist would not be very useful in a driving situation, but a word such as strawberry could work well. This agreement should also work when the parent or guardian is driving. In other words, no arguments ever while driving. Now we need to add another important key to understanding if your child is ready to drive and also add a very important training tool for parents. I will now explain passenger driving commentary. You will see different parent, child and new driver participation in this section. There are several steps I need to go over here. Step 1. I will explain right seat or passenger side commentary. The setup for this is with an adult driving and the child in the passenger seat. The object of this exercise is for a parent to understand how the child is using their eyes and what they perceive and observe out on the road as the parent or guardian is driving. There are two basic questions you can ask them. What do you see that is potentially dangerous? Where could hidden danger come from? Have a talk about it before you go out driving so your child knows what to expect. Initially, the parent will drive and the new driver will listen to better understand how this works. After the child has a grasp of what commentary driving is all about, then they can start to commentate as the parent is driving and listening. Here is me giving an example of the type of commentary we would like to hear from the right seat. Be prepared. We've got the construction on the right here. There could be workers, there could be pedestrians getting around the construction, cars trying to look around the construction. You have to be aware. Cyclists there on the right, trucks in front, cars coming faster on the left. You be aware, you're ready, you're looking in your mirrors, you're glancing every five to seven seconds in those mirrors. You have to know what's coming from behind. You have cars coming straight down, two lanes, you have a traffic light, cars coming from the right, cars coming from the left from two or three different areas, three different side roads, side streets and parking lots and people doing U-turns. There are huge blind spots here. Again, you anticipate that somebody's going to come between the cars. You're gonna, a child could run away from its mom between the cars, a pedestrian rushing or on the phone distracted. You've got a lady carrying a baby across the road there. You've got somebody opening their door here with the Range Rover on the right. A lot of pedestrians here, pedestrian area, a lot of restaurants. You have to anticipate a lot of danger here. People are looking for where they want to go. They're looking for a parking space. It's not a place to be distracted. 
Okay, the benefit of doing commentary driving, so we're going to work our way backwards from what we've just watched here. Part of your requirement is doing observation with your parents. And a lot of people say, well, I've been watching my parents drive. This is taking on a new meaning. It's more or less like you just saw with commentary driving. Even though you're not physically going to be driving a vehicle when you're observing with your parents, because observing means looking. So what he was trying to show you is you're pointing out to your parents what you basically understand of what should happen up ahead. Like I see the traffic light changing from green to yellow. I see the door opening up. I see there's a pothole in the road. Because a lot of times when you drive, and if you're not doing commentary driving, we have to assume that you see the light changing. We have to assume that you see the door that's opening up. And what did we say at the beginning of tonight's class? You should never assume with driving. It should be a hard, concrete fact. I see the door opening up. I see the pothole, and I know how to avoid it, whether it be straddling it or going around it. So when you do the observation with your parents, that's what they want you to do, is to do a little bit of commentary driving so your parents have a sense of what you see, what you know, and they can help you out. No, no, you're not supposed to go through that yellow light. We were way, way back far enough that we could stop. Yellow doesn't always mean to go through a yellow light. Um, I, your parent would say, I decided to go around the pothole because a lot of times I can't line up my tire quite right. And if I try to straddle it, sometimes I hit it. So they're giving you a little bit of wisdom of, you know, because it was so big, it makes more sense to go all the way around it. So you know absolutely that you're missing it. So you're getting to understand your, your parents, you know, uh, thought process of, of driving. And that's what that is supposed to um, accomplish. Now, another thing he talked about is I would like you to do this right now with your phone, not with the comment section of YouTube. He talked about, think of a, a, a word a, a, or a term that would describe what is an important uh, principle of driving. So after watching this video and after listening to tonight's first class and understanding the responsibility that is going to be yours operating a vehicle, what word or term comes to mind uh, of learning to drive? You can use maybe one of the terms that he used. I don't mind you using it, but I don't want everybody using the same one. So that's why I don't want it on YouTube. So um, someone wants to see the video of the racer. Who's that? Let me see. Oh, actually, remember... Um, the, the video from the guy that we just saw, remember, this whole class is is being recorded. So the minute I stop having this class tonight, when I turn it off, you'll find it on my YouTube channel tomorrow, uh, Peace, Love, and Safe Driving, or even later tonight, and you just scrub to the point that he went over it. Uh, someone asked a question during the video about going too fast. I want to explain my philosophy with speed limits and what to do. Uh, you're learning to drive, so I think it's very important that you go the speed limit, but because roads are not always flat, sometimes they go up, sometimes there's hills and you go down. We have an accelerator, we have a brake, we should be able to control the vehicle to go the speed limit, but there will be times you're going a little bit too fast, there will be times you're going a little too slow. Because you're learning to drive, I try to keep you, let's say it's 30 miles per hour. I, you know, if we have nobody in front of us, if you're going 32, 33, 34, I'm probably not going to say anything because I know it's going to level out and that speed's going to drop back down. Or if you're going up a hill, it's down to, you know, 26, 27. I know it's because you just haven't learned the accelerator that much. So I'm going to give you a little bit of leeway. So five above, five below, but we're going to try to go the speed limit. Once you go too fast or too slow, I'm either going to say, hey, hey, watch your speed, or I'm going to use my brake and I'm going to slow you down. I want you to do it. I don't want to be driving the car. You're learning to drive. So I want you to learn to do it. But until you get used to the car, there will be some fluctuation. I don't want you to be so nervous about um always going the speed limit that you're always looking down at your speedometer like I'm looking down right now and not up at the camera where the road would be. So that's what we're going to do there. I was not able to get to licensing tonight, even though he talked about permit system. I do want to mention that New Hampshire is a full licensed state, which means that when you go for your driver's license, 
you becoming a licensed driver. Uh, you will have some restrictions with people that are in the car, but for the most part, once you get your license, let's say in the next month and a half, you could drive to Maine, you could drive to Vermont, you could drive to Massachusetts by yourself. You are legal to drive in every other state that we have legally as a visitor. If you move to another state like New York, because they don't have licensure until 17, 17 and a half, legally, if you move there and take up residency, you've got to give up your license, which is kind of a disappointment. But that's really, um, practice driving can only be done here in New Hampshire. Okay, so within the borders of New Hampshire, you are covered on your parents' policy. Once you venture out to another state, I wouldn't do it. Um, you know, if you have been doing it and your parents are okay with it, that's up to your parents. But insurance companies frown upon that because every state has um, their own rules. Uh, someone just asked another question about homework. Is it due the night of class or by the next class? I would say um, it would be um, by at the end of um, the next class. Like uh, tonight, they're really, uh, the homework is to read chapter one and do the questions. So but chapter one questions, as long as they're done by tomorrow night's class, that's okay. It doesn't have to be before tomorrow night's class because chapter one in the textbook, let me get out the textbook again. Chapter one in the textbook right here, okay, is responsible um, and responsible driving is highway transportation system. So we're going to talk about the process of getting your license and we're going to talk about, oh, how the roads are built and why they're built a certain way, what makes them safe and unsafe. So I'll give you a little bit of the history of, of, of driving. Um, and, and, you know, if for whatever reason you get bogged down with other homework and you don't get it on time with me because you're working on a project for English, I get it. I understand. But try to get it in that night, if not by the end of the week. So we'll try to do it by modules each week. I do have one thing that I want to do before I let you go because we are getting up to that 9 o'clock time. Let me uh, put this in. Let's see if I can bring this up real quick. There we go. What I'd like everybody to do with their phone right now is get out your phone and I want you to write or text me um, some of this information, not all of it, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. What I want you to write down is what is on your birth certificate. So I need your, your legal last name, your first name, the way it's on your birth certificate, and your middle name. And then I need your birthday. I want you to do it two ways. I want you to write it down like... Uh, March 30th, 2005, and then put down 3 slash 30 slash 05. So I get it two ways. Uh, male or female, uh, your cell number, then your parents' number, because I think on Eventbrite, some people um, use their parents' cell number and not theirs. So I need your number, phone number. Oh, actually, you don't have to do phone number because you're texting me. Forget about that. I've got your number. So scratch that. Put your parents' phone number. I do need that. Then I need your address, meaning your house number, street, city, state, zip code. And then that's it. Don't do the email. Don't do the class session. So I want everybody to do that right now. I'm going to give you just a little bit of time to do that. I'm going to put on some funky music and uh, while you're doing that. And then we're going to wrap things up and we're going to explain tomorrow a little bit. All right. Put it, uh, put it all in one message, Leah. On all one text message. So this one text message is going to have all this information. Remember, I don't need your phone number, and I don't need the email or the class session. You don't have to keep on doing one line to the next line.
make sure your spelling is right, okay? Um, make sure that um, before you send it to me, make sure everything is correct. Because I didn't think I had a car student. Maybe I do. So far, people are sending in most of the information. Remember, I need a copy of your birth certificate. I'm going to kind of get out of the music here a little bit. And then while we're, if you're all done with the um, information up here on the sheet, uh, remember, I need this too. Let's see if this comes on. Let's move this over. So remember, go to Facebook. Later tonight, after we're done in the next 10 minutes, we'll be done in about 10 minutes. Um, you've got to go to Toll Driving School, a remote driver education class, and ask to join. I noticed some people did it while I was teaching and while I was watching the video. I went online and I accepted your asking to join. That is where you're going to do the pretest, which is going to be doing a little bit. Thank you for the birth certificate. All this information, because Eventbrite kind of is vague and parents fill it out thinking that it's for them and they give me their name or they do things a little bit different. I don't want wrong information going to the state. So all the information that you're giving me right now on this white piece of paper, I've got to send to the state to indicate this is who's going for their driver's license. So that's why I can't make any errors. So... And remember, if you have any questions, feel free to, I'm going to be not hanging around this computer, but I'll be on my phone for the next half hour um, doing some of these names, um, checking them out, making sure everything is, is right. No, it's not, my, it's not following the Facebook page. It's got to be the remote. Let me put it back up here again. Okay, it has to be this. It's not toll driving school. Okay, you are doing... You are doing toll driving school remote driver's education. It is a different, it's a different class. It has to say remote driver's education class. That is what, and it's not liking. See where it says join right below the picture, right below the picture. It says private group join. Okay. So it's not liking. It's not liking you're joining. So you could do it on your parents. You don't have, or if you have to create a page, you may have to do that, but I don't mind. Do it through your parents' Facebook page. It's just getting you to the link. That's all it is. Um, let me give you what the link is so you know what that is. Let me get this up on the board here first. Okay, there's your link. Okay, write this down in your notebook. When you go to the Facebook page to do any of your worksheets, anything that needs a link or a password, this is your password for your class. April APR 2021. So write that down. That will get you in to do the pretest tonight. So you have to go to the remote Facebook page to do it. If for whatever reason that you don't get on, I'll have to send you a link through a text message. All right. So we'll have to do it that way. But it's still going to be APR 2021 as your password to get in. So I'm hoping that most people are done with name, last name, first name, middle name, birth date, male, female, uh, your parents' phone number, then your address, and then that sheet is completed. Okay, so I'm going to get out of that. So there's our remote. I'm going to do one last thing. This is the last thing that we're going to talk about. Uh, tomorrow, I want drivers. So um, don't text me right now. I want you to text me probably in about, uh, do it after the pretest. So go take the pretest. And then after that, I want people, and remember, you're meeting me tomorrow at Oyster River High School. Um, pick the times. Mr. Toll, I can drive anytime between. 
8 and 11 or between 10 and 2. Uh, I could do any of these times. So the more options that you give me, the more people I'm going to be able to drive with. So give me what your options are. Uh, meet me at the school tomorrow. I will text you back. So if you were to say you've got from 1 to 4 open, if I can drive with you during 3, I'll text back. How about 3 o'clock tomorrow? Let's, let's do that. And then you'll text back, okay, 3 is good. All right, so I'm building my schedule according to this. Now, this is just for tomorrow. Okay, just tomorrow. And I'll have something else that we'll use for tomorrow to, to help with, with scheduling. But that's, that's it for tomorrow. Okay, um, I'll have to text that person that just came on. So that is it for tonight. Um, if you have any questions, just text me. Um, I think I've got most of the information that I need. Tomorrow we are going to go over chapter one from the textbook. Make sure that you read um, section one, two, and seven in the state manual. And we will talk a little bit about licensing as well as chapter one from the textbook tomorrow. So that's what we got going. And then on Thursday, it looks like we're going to talk about getting to know your vehicle. What are some of the steps that we should take prior to getting in a vehicle, getting ready to drive? We'll talk about manual transmission. Even though I don't have a manual transmission vehicle to teach you in, we will talk a little bit of what to do there. Uh, the pretest is on the remote group page. That is correct. But if you're still struggling of finding it and getting it, you're going to have to let me know, and I'll have to try to send you a link some other way. But remember your... See if I can get my finger right there. Right there. April 2021 is your password. All right. That's it for our first class. Very good. Nice job. Hanging in there. I'm so glad to see everybody tonight. So we'll see you tomorrow at 730. Let's get some people signed up to start driving tomorrow. And we're off to a good start. All right. Have a good night. Bye.